Capitol Report is a production of Senate Media Services. This week, the Senate Majority Leader questions the latest roadblock to the construction of the Enbridge Line 3 pipeline. Plus, we relive some of the fun conversations with state lawmakers from the State Fair, from the best staycation to possible new state symbols. Stay tuned for this week's Capitol Report. Welcome to this week's program. I'm Shannon Lurkey. The Department of Commerce last week announced its appeal of the construction of the Enbridge Line 3 pipeline, citing a failure to forecast the long-term demand for use of the line. Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka called a press conference to respond. We were surprised at the announcement uh, that the Commissioner of Commerce was going to continue the lawsuit and continue the delays of the Line 3 pipeline up in northern Minnesota. It runs from Western Minnesota across all the way to the other side of the state. Uh, it's great. It's a huge disappointment for many of us in northern Minnesota. Uh, and I want to say it's not really just the Commissioner of Commerce. It really is at the governor's instruction to delay this. And that uh, means that a whole lot of jobs are not going to go forward. And these are COVID safe jobs. These are outdoor jobs. Uh, the number, I, I, I think this is a correct number, but about 6,500 jobs, of which 4,200 are construction jobs, are on delay. And this permitting process, uh, permitting process has already been over five years, over five years of permitting, and we still are not doing this pipeline. And as, if you think about that, uh, what is the most, the safest scientific thing to do, and that would be to do this pipeline. The pipeline that's there right now is over 50 years old, has to be replaced. So instead, we're allowing trains to continue to take more and more oil across Minnesota when we could have a brand new pipe, which for the environment absolutely would protect the environment in a much better way than the way we're doing it right now. We put out a letter uh, a week ago, a bipartisan letter, uh, senators, for a Republican Democrat from northern Minnesota saying it's time to let this project go through and here we are with another delay that we did not need. I don't know who's given the governor advice on this. Uh, it's, uh, I, I, it, he did not reach out to us. I don't know how many uh, of the senators were reached out by the commissioner or the governor, but many of us were not contacted. Uh, and we have been saying over and over, this project needs to go forward. It's important for Minnesota. This was a very big deal, uh, a bipartisan big deal that we actually thought was going to be done uh, that is now going the opposite direction. The jobs aren't there. Uh, the promises weren't kept. And so now we're, we're going to reevaluate. But I, I honestly thought that they were going to let it go through finally after five years. coronavirus pandemic has canceled this year's great Minnesota get-together. But in years past, senators and representatives have eagerly participated by volunteering at the legislative fair booths in the education building. Many lawmakers make themselves available to talk with both their constituents and the public. Here's a look at some very Minnesota questions we've posed at the fair. The Minnesota license plate says land of 10,000 lakes. What is another Minnesota attribute that could also be on the Minnesota license plate? I was thinking we need to be accurate there and have land of 15,000 lakes because that's actually what we are. And if we're going to brag, we should brag correctly. Wow. Uh... <laughs> I stumped you. You did. Um, okay, our clean lakes are... Um, what... what what are people saying? What? Give me an I. Um, so, the okay. land of ten thousand. What else do we love about Minnesota? We love. Exactly. We love our our northern woods. We love our. We, I I love um, where the two rivers come together in Fort Snelling State Park. These two major rivers of the Midwest. I could live with that on our license plate. Um, what else could I love on? What a great question. Minnesota is huge in agriculture, and this state fair is an amazing treasure that uh, no other state really has. So agriculture, about fifth in the country in production, is big, it's uh, important uh, to, to not only the state, but across the country and in, in the world. 
and uh, the State Fair. Just a lot of fun, a lot of great stuff here. So uh, it should be touted. I love it. Land of 10,000 craft brewers. I, uh, I love my craft brewers and I actually have a, a booth out here at the State Fair that I'm going to go visit after I'm in here. So craft breweries has become such a culture, visiting all of the craft breweries around the state and they're growing so fast and they're creating jobs. I love my craft brewers. We see a lot of vineyards being promulgated throughout and we're seeing a lot of breweries coming in, these new breweries that you see. Buffalo's got some, Monticello's got some, a lot of them. So I'm seeing the vines the, the vine, the grapevines really coming into play and it's really a fantastic thing. I think land of Paul Bunyan. Uh, there's, it's very contested where Paul Bunyan is from and other states take claim to that and you know I'd like to think Paul, the home of Paul Bunyan is in my district in Bemidji, Minnesota and if we were going to do something different that might be kind of a fun nod to, to Minnesota and especially greater Minnesota to have you know the land of Paul Bunyan. First of all, tell us what district you represent, and then also, if a Minnesotan were planning to take a staycation, what should they see in your district? Well, my district is beautiful. I mean, we have, you know, over a thousand lakes in my district. There's phenomenal restaurants and pubs and, and things to go to and see, but we're very rich in, in outdoors there and outdoor activities. We have hundreds of miles of bike trails and snowmobile trails, so there's a lot of things we can do. There isn't specifically one thing to go see. There's a lot of things to go see, and that's why I think my district is a great area for, for tourism, but if you are going to see one thing in my district, the big statue of Paul Bunyan, the home of Paul Bunyan in Bemidji. It's kind of a fun must-see thing if you're in northern Minnesota. So my district is District 9 and what people don't know is they think that I actually live in Nisswa because my address is Nisswa, but I'm technically just outside of Nisswa and don't even represent Nisswa. So everybody asks me what we should do in Nisswa. Big Axe Brewery, Rafferty's Pizza, the Chocolate Moose, all of those things. But really, I represent Camp Ripley and then all the way to the west, which is the ag communities, uh, Wadena County, Todd County, Morrison County. Uh, but the one thing I would recommend people see is, is Camp Ripley. Uh, see the museums there. There's uh, wonderful art displays there of each of the armed forces uh, with the cemetery there. It's, it's more sobering, but it's something that I think is a must-see in Minnesota. My district is Forest Lake and Stillwater all along the St. Croix Valley, and I live actually all the way down in St. Mary's Point. Um, I think, I think that, and they're two different big cities. Forest Lake is different than Stillwater, uh, but I think a staycation in downtown Stillwater, uh, and a lot of people do do that. One, there's craft breweries there, uh, but also Stillwater is the birthplace of Minnesota, so there's so much history there with all the uh, lumber barons that, that started there in Stillwater and all of the uh, mansions uh, that now are bed and breakfast. That, that's a great tour. Unbelievable restaurants. Uh, really nice shopping. Um, but then the history in downtown Stillwater is really amazing. And we have, we actually have like three new, ho uh, three new hotels too. Brand new hotels. So it's a great staycation. Actually my daughter lives like three miles from downtown. She even did a staycation last month. So come to Stillwater and to Forest Lake. They're just different. Yeah, they are different. But I've I've gone to Stillwater for yeah, like weekends too. It's a great place. So fun. I think the must-see in in uh, Wright County is coming to the Wright County Fair, which is in Howard Lake. It's growing each year. We see more and more people coming. More and more opportunities. We're seeing different varieties of animals showing up, uh, from the different kinds of beef cattle to the different kinds of goats to llamas to different varieties of where these kids are getting their ideas. But what I see too is that the FFA in high school, there for about 10 years, we didn't have FFA instructors at the different schools. All of a sudden, we're starting to see we're getting people from. Wisconsin, Iowa, coming on as instructors for the FFA, and we're seeing the broadening expansion of new issues, new ideas, such as the horticulture, water culture, raising fish. Uh, it's, a, it's a new opportunity that goes. So I think the Howard Lake County Fair, I love the fair, I love this fair. I represent District 38, which is northeast suburbs. I live in Lionel Lakes, and it, it includes Lionel Lakes, White Bear Lake, White Bear Township, parts of Blaine, Centerville, Delwood, Hugo, and uh, Lexington, and North Oaks. So we have a lot of cities in the, in the district. Uh, I have part agriculture, part suburban, but one of the things that I think is impressive or pretty amazing for the district, not only is it part ag and part suburban, 
but we have about 13, 12, 13 lakes and ponds in the district, including the famous White Bear Lake. Yeah, you do have some nice lakes. And the biking in your district is really good. Yeah, we're, they're finishing a, a trail around White Bear Lake. There's some citizen groups that have been working hard on that. Uh, I got my bike out finally for the first time about a week ago, which was nice. I finally took the time to do it. So hopefully I'll burn off a few pounds before uh, I have to put it away again. Eden Prairie in Minnetonka has the most impressive parklands for a suburb, I think, in, in maybe the world. Um, and But honestly, the parks and the trails of Eden Prairie, Minnetonka, both city councils and mayors have done an incredible job. And I, and I also think there's a spot in Eden Prairie that has a view of um, the, uh, of across the river, across the Minnesota River, and you can see off in the distance um, 10 water towers for different little cities. And a couple years ago, my wife and I went and watched the fireworks on the 4th, and it was so cool because you could see all these different, they weren't up close like booms, but you could see off in the distance all these different cities and their fireworks. And I think Eden Prairie, we're just lucky. We've got a regional airport. We've got a shopping mall. Um, I mean, it's a nice community, and so is Minnetonka. It's, I love it. Minnesota has a state muffin, a state drink, a state sport, a state flower. What's another Minnesota something that should be the next Minnesota something? We need a state fossil. I got this one. A state <laughs> fossil. Just come on. We should have a state fossil. And what should that fossil be? I think the trilobite. The trilobite? Is that how you... The trilobite. The, I think that's what it's called. The trilobite. Um, or... Trilobite. Anyways, a uh, uh, state fossil would be great. I would leave it up to the geologist to figure out what is unique to Minnesota. Um, but I think uh, I, that'd be a nice thing for kids to, to see because right now all the state things are like living things maybe and um, in institutions, but that we've, there have been species living here for millions of years. Nice little reminder to people. I hope this isn't too unpolitic, but whiskey. We got everything else. Whiskey. There's a uh, we uh, can do distilling in the state now, and there's several distillers. I know there's one in northeast Minneapolis. There's one in north uh, west Minnesota. I'm sure I'm missing someone. There's uh, another one in Roseville area. They've been trying to get some licensing changes. But whiskey, why not whiskey? We have beer and everything else. Might as well have a whiskey. So the University of Minnesota makes a sweet corn ice cream. And I'm just saying that if the University of Minnesota made it, and we don't have an ice cream, maybe it's sweet corn ice cream. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it, but it's going to be at a, a football game that I'm going to go to sometime this year up in uh, the University of Minnesota. I'm going to try it, but I know the pres new president of the U said, this is awesome. So wow. I said, maybe we make a Minnesota ice cream. Well, it's very funny that you asked, Shannon, because I actually had a bill uh, my second year in the, in the legislature to make the state color we don't have a state color right now, and I wanted the state color to be purple. Um, and so it, it, we sort of resurrected it after Prince died, um, and I'm still, I'm still pushing for that. Some people say it's frivolous, but you know we have a lot of downtime, um, and I think the state color should be purple. We've got the Vikings, we've got Prince, um, Alzheimer's is something that I'm fighting for. So. Well, to stick with my theme, maybe we should have a state statue. Now, uh, once again, we could use Paul Bunyan. So. Well, Bunyan and Babe the Blue and, Ox exactly. there, right next to the lake. Exactly. And that could be our official one right there in Bemidji. Talking about grapes, I'm talking about, yeah. Um, the University of Minnesota developed a grape that I have in my backyard called the Minnesota Bluebell. It's very hardy, resistant to 40 below. And so in coming back from a hard winter, hard frost, you know, uh, the, the Minnesota Bluebell grape is a, a great opportunity, just like the Honeycrisp apple when that got put in place. People are also talking about a new apple variety coming out of the University of Minnesota that should overtake that, but the Honeycrisp is right now the apple. So I see a, a new grape. Why is it important for Minnesotans to talk to their lawmakers and be engaged with the legislative process? Well, this democracy, this republic, depends on citizen participation of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, these might seem like old words and worn out, but they're still very important. They still carry meaning. And it's very important for the people to understand that without their input, without their participation, the elitists will get what they want. It goes to the people who are in the arena. 
If you're not in the arena, you're going to lose. Now, I may disagree with your point, perspective or point of view, and we can hash that out. But if you're not in the arena and you're sitting on the sidelines, uh, rest assured something's going to be done to you. Be part of the process. It's a lot of work. It's not exciting all the time, but you should pay attention because in Minnesota, unlike D.C., we can function and get things done. We have much more impact on the lives of the citizens of this state than D.C. can. So bring it home. Politics is local. Uh, from the city council, the county, the state legislature, we have much more impact on people's lives than they can in D.C. So pay attention to local. That's where it all starts, and that's where it's most important. And this is something that I tell my kids all the time, too, because they're all wrapped up in the Kardashians or where Taylor Swift is. Uh, but and even people that say they don't like politics, it's not about the politics, it's about the issues, and all issues are so local. So I, I just to even, even follow your senators or your representatives' Facebook page to see what they're doing, what they represent, what ideas that they're trying to get passed here in the state, it's really, really important because it affects you, your life, your job, your career, your taxes, your property, uh, at, right in your backyard. So you really should, I just encourage everybody to just get to know their representative. If people stay informed or uninformed and don't pay attention to who's in office and what they're doing, those laws affect how they live. I mean, whether it's uh, the fact that you have to pull over when somebody's trying to pass you or you get a ticket for using your cell phone. I mean, those are types of laws that we pass in Minnesota or we don't pass based on what the people of Minnesota think. And so, very important, uh, taxes are uh, impact Minnesotans. Uh, the 20 cent gas tax, for example, that the governor proposed, many people said, we don't want to do that. And I think that was part of the reason that we were able to say no 20 cent gas tax. So many, many issues, some things we solve for the good and some things we stop because they're not good based on what the people of Minnesota think. I think it's a very important that people get to see us out in our districts uh, because what happens there has an influence on their jobs, on their livelihoods, on their day and day activities. Your spouse, your wife, your partner, whatever back home, that has a, a positive or a negative effect on how you're going to live your life. That's the only way we know what's going on and get a tone of what, what the public wants us to do in the direction they want their legislature to go. And we do get a lot of opinions from very differing viewpoints and it's important to hear them all so we can take everything in and make the best decision for our constituents and the areas we represent. Mm. I, I, as you know, Shannon, I taught American government for 33 years, and I kept telling them, you got to contact your legislators. You got issues, you got comments, you got questions, you got concerns. That's our job, and we love it when people come down there. And um, uh, um, last year, this um, senior from Eden Prairie High School comes, and she's from v she's been in the United States for four years since ninth grade from Vietnam. Halfway through our meet, uh, my thing with her, she starts crying, and I asked what was wrong she says I can't believe we're living in a country where I can come meet my elected official and that, uh, Minnesota come on down come to the state capitol we love it when you come down we, you guys your job is to make us better at our job so come on down please Minnesota State Capitol is rich with symbols, many of which are unnoticed. Brian Pease of the Minnesota Historical Society helps bring them to the forefront. Minnesota State Capitol has a lot for a visitor to take in, from the art, from the variety of stonework, from the grandeur of the spaces. But for those people that are really interested in details, there's some symbols that they could search for. Can you talk about the symbols in the Capitol? Yeah, sure. They Cass Gilbert, who was the architect of the Capitol, and also uh, Elmer Garnsey was the chief decorator, uh, put all kinds of Minnesota symbols throughout the decoration. And a lot of these places you have to look real close because you might walk by them if you worked here for years, for instance. If you don't look at the details, sometimes you walk by all these symbols for many, many years. And so you'll see lady slippers and north stars, and there are gophers because we're the gopher state. And they're interspersed and interlaced in all the decoration throughout the state capitol. There's some threads that tie the outside to the inside in terms of symbols, uh, the letter M and some of the braids of agricultural products. Where are they outside and where are they inside? 
On the outside, you'll see on the exterior, especially around the front entrance, you'll see lion's heads. And when you see a lion's head with its mouth open, it represents authority. And then you'll see above that, you'll see eagles around the dome. And those are represent, of course, eagles from the national government. So we're part of this United States. And then in between the eagles and those columns, you'll see uh, beautiful uh, carved stones of lady slippers. And so those are ringing the dome. So once again, as you're walking up those front steps, you get this idea of the sense of prosperity and progress of the state. You have that gold horses in the front that represents the prosperity and the progress. Plus you'll see wreaths and festoons of products, agricultural products that were an important part of recognizing Minnesota's economy and its wealth from 1900. So if you were to come inside the Capitol and look for eagles, where might you find some eagles? You'll find them everywhere. You can go to the Rathskeller. There are eagles down in the Rathskeller cafeteria. You can go to the ground floor. There are some in the decorations of the pedestals. You'll see them in the first and second floor. You'll see them in just about every chamber. There's a, a representation of an eagle. Once again, establishing the importance of that federal government and the importance of being part of that United States. As you approach the front of the Capitol, there's a letter M on either side. M plays a big part in this Capitol. Yeah, M's are, of course, represent Minnesota. So as that visitor, you want to see that this is Minnesota's state capital. So you'll see letter M's not only in the front of the building, and you'll see them in the railings, in a cipher, they call it. You'll see letter M's even in the points of the star, the North Star, in the rotunda. And you'll see M's all throughout the decorations in the ceilings, the stencil work, and so forth in the house chamber. And once again, what, what Cass Gilbert and Elmer Guernsey are establishing is this is Minnesota state capital. So you always want to remind people Minnesota has uh, all these things that you can learn about or be a part or have that culture and that industry and that agriculture to understand us as a state in 1900. The Lady Slipper, which is Minnesota's state flower, can be found both outside and inside at the top of the columns. Where else can we find the Lady Slipper? If you, as you walk up those front steps, you'll see, you have to look closely because they're quite a distance above you, but in those uh, capitals, the Corinthian capitals, right dead center is the Lady Slipper. And that's also found in the third floor when you look at the top of the capitals throughout the building. Uh, you'll see these lady slippers. And they're in the railing, where there's, there's a third floor railing that you have to stand on the second floor to look up to see those lady slippers. They're in some of the stencil work and the decoration of the house. And so that's once again an important state flower from the 1900s that is still an important part of us recognizing, you know, I think we're the only state that has a pink and white showy lady slipper. So that's a, a, uni a unique decorative detail in the state capitol. Minnesota is known as the Gopher State, and it's because of a railroad scandal that happened in the 1850s. Tell us the story of how Minnesota became to be known the Gopher State. Yeah, that was one of the first big political controversies or scandals in the state's history. And in fact, that all was taking place even before we became a state. Minnesota was given uh, railroad grants from the U.S. government, and they added that grant legislation into a, as a writer to a Gopher and Blackbird eradication bill. And so it was like eradicate gophers and blackbirds and these land grants are given to the state of Minnesota to develop its natural, its, its uh, industrial resources with railroads and so forth. But when we became a state, the constitution said we could only borrow $250,000. And in order to build the railroads, the investors were saying we need more money. So they changed the constitution just a few months after it was adopted to make that loan agreement to five million dollars. And so what happened is they gave grants and money to all these uh, different railroad agencies and then there was a huge economic depression. Sucked out all the investments out of Minnesota and so for that five million, million dollars there wasn't one mile railroad built. So that was a political scandal. So there was a St. Paul druggist, a cartoonist who drew up a cartoon showing the railroad men dressed as gophers trying to influence the people and they were pulling a car full of legislators to the end of a railroad track that went to the Slough of Despond which is a Pilgrim's Progress reference and so it's basically you know the railroads being held up by the backs of uh, legislators who were bribed so the, the the heaviness of the gold sacks are pulling them down and the railroads built on top of them so that cartoon was pretty popular and that's how we became known as the Gopher State. And so where can those gophers be found in this building? They're once again like stars, not as common, but you'll see them in the same railings. You'll see the uh, lady slippers and the eagles. 
You'll see them carved in the house uh, retiring room, which is not available to the public, unfortunately, but there's a, a two little gophers sitting on their hind legs there. Those are the same things you'll see in the railings. They're also found in the gates. And those were added in the 1970s outside the chambers. And so you'll see them on their hind legs at the top of the gates. And so that's kind of a, a fun way of bringing in, you know, what Minnesota was recognized for even in 1900 was the Gopher State and the North Star State. Well, let's talk about the North Star because at the very top of the dome, uh, it's adorned with uh, zodiac symbols. Do those carry any special significance? Yeah, they're representing more of the stars, the constellations. So the idea that Gilbert was trying to create was as you're standing in the first floor of the rotunda where there's a large North Star emblazoned in, in marble but also in, in brass and glass, if you look up you'll see you know, these, these signs of the zodiac which would be the stars above. And then some people say that large chandelier could be seen as a North Star as well because that's a guiding light. And that was the idea that Henry Sibley wanted when he came up with that model for the brand new state of Minnesota in 1858 is we're the northernmost state at that time and plus a, a North Star is a light that people can follow. And so the idea is follow our lead as a new state. So there's a lot of detail to be discovered in the capital. How much of this is pointed out in a tour? Yeah, a lot of it is uh, something that is first and foremost as people walk through the spaces and the tour guides are very good at, at pointing out some of those little clever details um, depending on, on the type of group on uh, the type of stories that guide might be talking about because we don't ha really have a scripted tour each guide will have some different things and nuances they'll put into their tours to make it unique and individual but yeah you'll see uh, obviously that north stars in the rotunda you might point out the gophers in the railings and the lady slippers and you'll see all kinds of uh, the agricultural products just as you walk through the building. And so the spaces the tour groups go to pretty much hit all these, these areas where you can, as that viewer, kind of ingest all that agricultural products that you see as a visual uh, reminder throughout the building. Was it common practice when, when this capital was being designed and built to have this level of detail found throughout a building like this? Yeah, I think in this time period, what you're creating is this Italian Renaissance style building. And so you're bringing some of those uh, decorative elements and details into the building. So the arabesques, which would be on the first floor stencils, are very uh, kind of flowers and products of the state. And if you went to Italy, it might be a different type of decor there because they're, you know, promoting what they have to offer. Whereas Cass Gilbert and Elmer Garnsey made the decorations here very Minnesota focused. So you're going to see corn more than you would say apples or grapes in some other you know, location in other parts of the United States or, or Europe. And so that's what makes the building really neat to look at is it's a, it's a Italian Renaissance inspired building but it has to represent Minnesota's values and its history and its economy as, at the same time. Join us again next week as we delve into more topics affecting Minnesotans. I'm Shannon Lurkey, and on behalf of all of us at Senate Media Services, thanks for watching.